Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the How to Write a Book podcast. What is up? What is up, you guys? Oh, my gosh, it is already. We are in the 20s of this month, which means that we have like 10 days approximately until the end of the month, and then we're in December. Oh my gosh, can I just take a minute to congratulate you for showing up and for being like, I am still going to believe in myself, I'm going to believe in my book, and even if it's just like a really small, tiny little like voice inside your head that believes in you, hold on to it. Hold on to it with both hands and just don't let it go, you know, because you have a story that is worth being told and it's meant to be told. All right. So in this micro episode, um, we're going to be talking about the importance of having your avatar um, or your ideal reader. So one of the things that I ask uh, my clients just right off the bat is, you know, who do you imagine this is for? Um, and sometimes they don't quite understand what I mean. And I want to dive into this so I can give you guys a really good explanation as to like, how do you imagine this avatar? So primarily, we're going to start with the first thing, which is visualizing your book. So like literally, what do you think your book is going to look like at the end of your process? Um, is it going to be big and square? Is there going to be a small paperback? What kind of colors are on it? What does the font look like? What does your book kind of remind you of? So like if you were to put it on a shelf in Barnes and Noble, for example, where do you think that book would sit? You know, and uh, what other books would be around it? You know, because they're usually with a organize the books according to genre and genres have their own conventions and their own styles that they stick to. So when you start thinking about that, you'll start to physically understand, you know, where your book might fit. Now, once we get past that, I want to ask you, you know, who will be buying this book? So, you know, there's someone who's walking through that aisle and they look at this shelf and they're like, oh yeah, that speaks to me. That speaks to me. You know, who do you want to pick up this book? You know, really be specific on their demographics, right? So like, you know, um, age, uh, gender, um, nationality, their job, um, anything else that you can think about. And when you create this avatar, remember that you're not excluding anyone who doesn't fit this avatar. So, you know, for example, if, if your book is aimed towards women, you don't have to worry about like, oh, well, I do want to include men. I don't want to not include men. You know, for example, you know, it's like, no, no, you're totally cool. We just have this avatar to give us an idea because when we start creating our book, sometimes we can drift a little bit away from the voice and it helps to remember who we're talking to to begin with. So um, don't think that you're excluding anyone. You just really want to be specific on who you're talking to. And in case you're not sure who would pass by through that aisle, then I give you a different question. And the question is, if you could give your book away for free, who would be that ideal person to receive that gift? You know, say you're at a book fair. Oh, I love book fairs. Oh my gosh. Oh, I just got so nostalgic right now. Um, or you're at a convention or you're at your community church or something like that where you have an opportunity to give away a few books. And someone walks up to you and when you see them and they tell you their story, um, you're like, oh my gosh, perfect. I need to give you my book. You are exactly the person who I was writing this for, you know, and you hand it to them. Who is that person? You know, maybe that'll help you hone in. And in case, you know, it sounds really like, like nonfiction genre. So the same can, can be said for fiction, you know. Say you're reading a story and you really want to inspire that one person who you know will listen to this fictional story and they're going to take it into their soul and they're going to apply it to their real selves and grow and be inspired. You know, who would that person be if you gave them a free book? So either fiction or nonfiction. And really the writer's block is when you kind of lose your voice and you're not totally sure how you begun. And that happens, you know, sometimes you are so far deep into a project that you're in the weeds and you forgot, you know, the motivation or the inspiration or the fire that had first ignited it. And you just need a little bit of a reminder to get back on track. And that's totally normal, y'all. 
totally normal. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you need more information on National Novel Writing Month, go to nanorimo.org. Um, also, if you want some free writer's toolkits, you can go to www.blackcardedstudios.com or go to the website that is on the outro of my episodes and that will still take you to blackcardestudios.com you can get your three writers resources click on resources for writers and hey y'all you know i'm opening up some spots for some new clients um now that it's going to be the end of 2020 and i want to help you start off 2021 with a bang so if you're interested in some coaching and you want to know more then please feel free to email me uh masiel at blackcardestudios.com that's m-a-s-s-i-e-l at blackcardestudios.com thank you guys so much and i'll see you another side Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Masiel Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themasiel.com. That's www.themasiel.com. We'll see you on the other side.